Hi guys and welcome back to Macaroon. You might remember last summer, I made a video featuring a sodium alginate water toy, which looks something like this. So the first kit was kind of experimental because I wasn't able to get it to work the way it's supposed to. And this is a second one, which I also got from bango.com because I want to repeat the DIY and see if I can finally make those cute little water characters using the gel provided. By complete coincidence, I was in a toy shop recently and I came across this, which is basically an expensive version of exactly the same thing. This one is super fancy and it comes with an aquarium and batteries and it's got lights and colors and I'm not sure what else. So I decided that I have to test this out and see how it compares to the basic kit which I ordered online from China. This is a quick note to say that the second kit was hilarious and probably one of the most ridiculous craft kits I've ever tested. You basically end up with this DIY aquarium slash glow-in-the-dark lava lamp. I also decided to take the pieces out and leave them to dry just to see what happens. The results turned out really shocking, so be sure to watch until the end. So first of all, let's unbox the Banggood kit. This actually contains slightly more stuff compared to the one from my first video. A new thing is this plastic net, which helps you scoop out the pieces. The calcium chloride powder also has better instructions, so you can clearly see that the package contains 40 grams, but you should only mix 20 grams with one liter of water. Then we've got plastic and wooden molds, and I'm pretty sure the designs for these are completely random and spread across these kits. This actually makes it a nice surprise, because you never know which ones you're going to get. And lastly, you get a whole bunch of sodium alginate gel, along with some glitter and a mixing spoon. I don't want to make the same mistake from my first video, so I'm going to measure out exactly 20 grams of calcium chloride and then mix this into water. This is just a type of salt, and in this concentration, it's pretty harmless. However, I noticed that it does dry out your skin a bit, so be sure to wash your hands afterwards. The first step, which I always tend to forget, is to rinse your mold in the solution. This leaves a thin layer of liquid on the plastic, which helps you demold the piece later on. Now you can fill it up using any combination of sodium alginate gel. Sodium alginate is a harmless substance derived from seaweed, and it basically turns solid after being exposed to calcium chloride. This chemical reaction is called spherification, and it's commonly used in molecular gastronomy. I was really pleased to see that the dragonfly held its shape, unlike all of my attempts using the first kit. I did notice that the sodium alginate gel was a lot thicker in this kit compared to the first one, and I think that made the biggest difference. Next up, I want to remake the rainbow heart. This time it worked really well and turned out exactly how I hoped. One of the things I like most about these water charms is being able to pop or destroy them afterwards. I always assume that you can't keep these pieces for a long time, but it turns out there actually is a method which you'll see later on in this video. Now I'm going to make some stripy fish. I find the process of adding these gels really relaxing, though you have to work fairly quickly. A big tip is to remove all the lids from the bottles before you start, so you can grab and apply any color you need right away. One of my favorite parts about this kit is that the sodium alginate gel is fairly transparent. This gives all your pieces a nice crystalline aesthetic.
So now let's move on to the expensive Toy Store kit. This is also available over Amazon and I've linked it down below. To activate the aquarium, you'll also need three batteries which aren't included and be sure to insert these before you add water to the tank. First, there are some plastic molds which look a lot sturdier than the ones from the other kit. Then there's a liquid called magic water, but we obviously know that this has to contain a calcium chloride solution. I find the mixing bowl very clever because it actually contains markings showing you how much of each ingredient to add. This is a great attention to detail which I've never seen in other DIY sets. And lastly we have some colourful sodium alginate tubes which are very nicely packaged. To get started I'm adding half of the magic water into the bowl. Just like the first kit, there are two portions of calcium chloride in here so you can do this DIY twice. Then I'm diluting it with tap water based on the measuring lines and then mixing everything together. I'm choosing the jellyfish mold first and dipping it into the liquid. I like the fact that this is pink because it makes it easy to see if there's any extra liquid inside the molds that might need wiping off. The gel is easy to apply and looks a lot more opaque than the first kit. I have to say I'm a tiny bit skeptical whether this one would work because the details are so thin. Considering how many problems I had just getting a heart shape, this jellyfish with tiny tentacles seems like a huge jump in difficulty. When I placed it in the solution, the sodium alginate did start shrinking quite a bit, but to my amazement, all of the tentacles and facial features actually stayed in place. However, this really made me laugh because it literally looks like one of those expectation versus reality memes. No matter how well you apply the gel, the final result is always going to be slightly unpredictable. The same applies to this whale. I thought the round body shape would make the spherification process go more smoothly, but the results were even more tragic. This whale really looks like it's seen some stuff. Next, I'm going to try the seahorse. For some reason, this turned out a lot better, maybe because the curvy shape of the mold prevented the sodium alginate from shrinking too much. I made the rest of the sea creatures in the same way, and I was pleasantly surprised by how well everything worked. This kit definitely has better ingredients and a smaller margin of error. Now it's time to add all the sea creatures into the aquarium. The tank needs to be filled up with one liter of tap water, and there's an interesting extra step, which is to add one teaspoonful of salt into the liquid. Someone please go tell Nerdy Crafter to try out this kit. My assumption is that table salt, aka sodium chloride, is chemically similar enough to calcium chloride, so it helps to preserve the sodium alginate pieces. I wasn't sure what to expect when hitting the switch, and I found it so hilarious how there's a water jet which keeps the little creatures moving around. There's something really oddly relaxing about this entire DIY. Since I made all of these slightly imperfect creatures from scratch, I feel a real sense of achievement seeing them swimming around the tank like this. There are even inbuilt lights so you can watch it in the dark, and this really looks like some kind of crazy underwater lava lamp. I'm pretty sure that you can keep these in the water for quite some time and just use it as room decor. However, after two days, I decided to pour them out just to see if they changed. The texture is a lot firmer and very rubbery, and unlike the first kit, these definitely don't feel liquid inside, so there's no point cutting them open. Instead, I decided to leave them out in the air to dry, 
And now get ready to see how they look after two weeks. They're so tiny that I had to use my macro lens to film them, which is what I normally use for super close-ups. Miraculously, all the tentacles on the jellyfish are still attached. The whale from the thumbnail looks even more disturbing, and I didn't even think that's possible. The parts which aren't fully dried up have a slight rubbery texture. I poked one of them apart and it feels a bit like jelly inside. I think if you leave these for long enough, then all of them will turn into a tiny crisp, just like the seahorse here. This was the smallest piece, so it obviously dried up the fastest. This is the weirdest leave it and see experiment from any of my DIYs. Just for comparison, this is how big they were beforehand, and this is after. All that volume must have been liquid, which evaporates if you leave it out in the air. I was very positively surprised by this kit, because in my experience, most craft toys tend to be a lot harder to make, such as those infamous Jelly World tanks. This one, however, got great reviews on Amazon, and I have to agree with those. The only thing I'm slightly disappointed about is that the color gels are very opaque and they almost look like kids' crayons. I think you can get prettier results if they include a transparent or translucent sodium alginate, similar to the other kit from Bango.com. The clear gel from that one allows you to include things like glitter or sprinkles, which are much more satisfying to cut open. So I hope this video is interesting, and please hit that subscribe button if you want to see more. You can also find me on Instagram under my username Macaroon. I'm Joanna, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye!